Hi, welcome back to my audition for the 3.30 a.m. time slot on C-SPAN. While I'm patiently waiting on deliveries for three exciting projects that are being stalled in existential horror due to regional holiday shipping delays, I did this. Unfortunately for the pencil sharpener, I had a pencil sharpener laying around, and being that this channel is just a worse version of interdimensional cable, uh, I decided to put a turbine behind it. I will say that as I went through and designed this project, none of it was done with any uh, anything good. Let's put it that way. I went through and built a Pelton wheel. Um, I'm using the kind of double dish design. I'm not going to go through entirely how a Pelton wheel works because uh, there's a lot of good videos on that already. Hi. Really, my goal is to get all of the energy from the air flowing through the nozzle turned into energy to turn the Pelton wheel. And Pelton wheels are fairly efficient, especially when designed like this. Um, and I hate to say it, this isn't a terrible design for a Pelton wheel. Um, I don't hate it. All of the design tolerances were designed to this specific design of, eh, pretty close. All right, so first of all, 3D printers are magic, and nobody can tell me any different because this turned out fantastic. Holy cow. Other than that, <laughs> this is a really super simple assembly. Uh, a handful of bearings, four screws, and a center shaft that I actually didn't have any quarter inch rod hanging around. Um, so I actually just ended up cutting off the end of the bolt. So let's start with the bearings. These are standard R4 bearings, and they just slide into either side of the panel with the very precise bearing install tool. And the same on the other side. One thing to note about this is that uh, it has that taper going down to the nozzle and that was not designed with any parameters in mind. It just, it tapers a little bit to a nozzle. This pencil sharpener does have an offset hole, so I made sure to kind of center it and kind of build a, I tried to counterbalance it. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know if it will or not, but we're going to find out. Uh, there is a million set screws in this, which I did not put on the paper. So I didn't find any number 5x40s, but I did find M4s, which in the engineering world we call close enough. So this and this, shaft goes in like that, should drop on like that. Direction does matter on this, so that goes on there. Oh, that's a snug fit. I definitely designed it like that. What am I missing? I don't think anything. And I take it back apart because I did not put any of the set screws for that center for that center pinion on. All right, so we have this. I was going to connect this to a hose and a regulator, but uh, I only had this regulator, which comes out in four, and we only need one. And I didn't have a three eighths hose with me today, so we're just going to try this and. Uh, I think it'll work okay. Yeah. All right. So. I'm gonna hold it. Do you think it's a little bit unsteady out there? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I decided to come over here uh, to the vise because it has about as much stability as it looks like. Um, and let's see what it does. I'm going to put on safety glasses as well. An unsharpened pencil. This is clogging up bad. WD-40 will solve that. basically cotton oil. Is it on? I can barely hear it. This is the superior way to cut pencils. 
So after about five hours of design time and about three hours build time, uh, it does sharpen pencils. And man, I've, I've never seen a pencil better sharpened than that. So this works fantastic with no flaws whatsoever. Uh, it does great. I highly recommend this because you don't have to sharpen your pencils by hand. And like, that's, that's what we're here for. Uh, <laughs> I've, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say that I did try to measure the RPM. Uh, I set the camera at 240 frames per second and tried to count revolutions with my little dot. And uh, I couldn't quite get an accurate reading. I have an RPM gauge, uh, just a tester that works out for a reflective strip. And that quits working at about 11,000 RPM, so it's above that. But I, outside of that, I have no clue. Um, fast. <laughs> I noticed something interesting was happening with the wheel as it was spinning in here, so I uh, decided to get a close-up of that, and let's take a look. All right. Looking at the footage and looking at the gear itself, um, it's it's actually hard to tell. I pulled up SolidWorks and tried to find a weak point. I did notice that the set screw was actually missing uh, after it all came apart. So I'm almost wondering if that set screw coming out and flying apart just, just ate up those gears uh, or ate up the paddles more than anything. But I think that'll probably do it for this video. Um, this is dumb, but I love it. Uh, some of my favorite projects are the are the ones that you kind of ask why at the end. Uh, and this is definitely one of those. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe, comment, and stuff like that. Like I said, we got a couple of really cool videos coming up pretty soon that uh, include Harbor Freight engines. So I'm excited about those. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. Just wanted to jump in here at the end and being that we're getting close to the end of the year, thank you guys very much for watching the videos. Thank you guys very much for all the support this year. Uh, it's been an incredible year um, and I, I, I can't thank you guys enough for that. I appreciate it a lot. And I got a lot of cool stuff planned in the coming months and hopefully next year we got some cool projects. So. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this year. It's it's an, I'm I'm constantly amazed on how amazing all of this is and that you guys tune in to watch me do dumb projects sometimes. And I I can't thank you guys enough for that. So